Happy Sunday, and welcome to Church of the Valley. It's a very special Sunday because it's Elders Sunday, and the elders will be leading us through a special time of worship. Be sure to get your elements ready so that we can take communion together in just a little bit. But let us begin in prayer. Loving God, we thank you for this time together when we can share our love for our church community and we can share our love for our elders. We thank you for your son who taught us to love and who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hello. My name is Elder Roger Bethler, and we want to thank you for joining us for our elder service today. Our first epistle reading is 1 Thessalonians 1-2. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Hello all, my name is Elder Leah Bass Bayless. I'm the newest elder. Today's second epistle reading is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. Amen. I'm Daryl Fetty, I'm a church elder, and I'm going to speak today about faith. I grew up in a West Virginia Baptist church, so faith was foundational and taken for granted. My religious dad liked to quote Mark 9.23, all things are possible for him who believes, which helped me form a positive attitude about life. Unfortunately, while growing up, I also saw a lot of hypocrisy and gross distortions about the meaning of faith. When I became a teenager, I could no longer reconcile the prejudice, racial, and sexual bigotry and arrogance of people who called themselves Christians. The mindset that if you're not exactly like me, I'm going to heaven and you're not. So I left the church. I never even considered going back until I was in my mid-30s. That's when I moved just a few doors down from the Little Brown Church. While I didn't believe in religion anymore, I always believed in God, and I still prayed. With the doors always open at LBC, I could come inside a holy place and pray anytime I needed to. Then at LBC and COV services, I found the church without prejudice, where I could express my faith in a positive way. Boy, have we needed to stay positive this year. A study by the American Psychological Association found that positive religious coping helps people transcend stressful times. Faith can foster a sense of connectedness to our fellow human beings, as well as to something larger than ourselves and the current problems we're facing. But misplaced faith can have a negative effect, like the false belief that God is punishing the world, or us personally, which makes us feel guilty or become angry with God or other people. Another example of misplaced faith is when we expect God to take care of everything, assuming no responsibility of our own. Putting everything in God's hands is called religious deferral, like when arrogant church leaders hold services in defiance of COVID-19 guidelines saying that God will protect their congregations. God gave us a brain. To be divinely protected, we need to learn how life works and use that brain. In a recent movie, The King of Staten Island, this troubled kid closes his eyes while driving quite a distance down the highway until he suddenly opens his eyes just in time to avoid a fatal crash. 
It seemed to me this kid was testing God. He had a fatalistic religious deferral view that if God wanted him to live, he could just close his eyes and drive. Faith does not mean that God does all the driving. Here's another Bible verse. Faith without works is dead. So what work can we do in these seemingly helpless and hopeless days? We can practice forgiveness and thankfulness for what we do have instead of dwelling on what we don't have. We can pray, putting our trust in God, but also asking for guidance about what we can do to help ourselves and others. We can communicate with others, lend a sympathetic ear and a helping hand whenever it's needed. We can serve and give to organizations we believe in, like our church, a political party, or any good cause. Despite the limitations put upon us by this pandemic, when we give of our time, talent, and treasures, it opens the door to a flow of energy that can come back to us. So as we used to say during the turbulent 1960s, which like now, was a stressful and divisive time we thought would never end. Keep the faith, baby. at COV and LBC. Each week I have the great honour to compile and send the prayer request list. I say great honour because I'm responsible for sharing the word. 
for sharing the comforts and concerns that link us all in prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, week after week you hear our deepest concerns, mostly for others and for many we have never met and are not likely to. Distant family of church members, friends and colleagues. We rarely ask for prayers for ourselves, but this Sunday I ask you to shine a light on the lives of this congregation as we battle hardships, illness, fears and health concerns. Rest your hand on, on our shoulders and guide us where you can. Give us strength to face each day with our heads held high, forever basking in your glory. And reassure us that all will be well. As good Christians, we are well aware that everything happens for a reason. Help us to see what that reason is when the path seems long and unclear. Your world has become frightening and divisive, but we know that our faith and the faith of millions will bring us back to you. Please end this period of uncertainty and hatred among mankind. Be with us always and know that we feel you, we honour you and we need you. Be with those suffering cancer and Covid related illnesses and those recovering from falls and surgeries. May their healing be swift and effective. Help to bring those who have lost jobs and who are struggling with financial hardships, comfort and prosperity and help everyone desperate for assistance get the care they need. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Hi, I'm Elder Tammy Damiano, and I've been tasked with preparing a sermon on hope. Now, normally under different circumstances, like, I don't know, anything that just does not resemble the year 2020, I would have said, sure, no problem. Hope, you say? You want me to speak about hope? Well, I got plenty of that. But I don't think I'm alone in stating that this year in particular has put a bit of a strain on my hope meter. It's just a little, how would you put it? I'm just strained at the moment. So, with my heart and soul heavy with the burden of seeking for words of hope in my heart, I turn to the prose. Historic speeches from our most inspiring leaders over the years. And those definitely helped, but it got me thinking of not just extraordinary examples of hope, but even the everyday examples of hope. Now, luckily, like I said, I'm, I'm normally a pretty positive gal, and I recognize that I oftentimes find it pretty easy to catch glimpses of hope in this world. Even in 2020, with COVID-19 and us still being quarantined, I still find hope everywhere. Where do I find it? In the sunshine, in flowers, things of nature that no matter what disease may be raging or who is leading our country that you may or may not agree with, here in California, the sun is still shining and flowers still find a way to make it to the surface every day. I find it in people like Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who fought all of the odds against her being Jewish, being a woman, and being a mother, and made it to the highest court in the land, and not only participated in landmark decisions, she helped shape landmark decisions and form bases for equality for women. I find it in protesters for Black Lives Matter who, no matter what decisions have been made or what just injustices still keep occurring, they put their shoes on every day, as well as their masks, and they peacefully let their voices be heard and let it be known that what is happening in this country cannot continue, and we will no longer stay silent. I find it in kids like Fletcher, who comes down with an extremely rare form of brain cancer and catches the attention of a YouTube influencer named Mark Rober. This is a guy that does these crazy and fun science experiments on this large, large epic scale, and he films them for his YouTube channel. His most recent one is called world's largest devil's toothpaste explosion. If you don't know what devil's toothpaste is, it's basically an even larger variation of elephant's toothpaste. Right, what's elephant's toothpaste? Well, here is the Wikipedia definition. Elephant's toothpaste is a foamy substance that is caused by the rapid decomposition of hydrogen peroxide using potassium iodide 
iodide or yeast and warm water as a catalyst. How rapidly the reaction proceeds will depend on the concentration of hydrogen peroxide. Simply put, it's this big, huge foam mountain that your kid can make in the backyard. Now this YouTuber made the granddaddy of a foam mountain, all for this kid named Fletcher, who inspired him to give him the biggest surprise birthday party of his life, and at the same time, hopefully break the world's record for largest devil's toothpaste. It's, it's so silly, but I'm telling you, watching this kid and these families and all these people come together to construct this foam mountain filled with rainbow food coloring and watching it just explode and spill across all this California farmland. I was truly thankful that Dante had never asked me to do this experiment. <laughs> but you know, he's taking chemistry this year and we are, are still working and learning from home, so I think it's only a matter of time before we actually have to attempt this ourselves. I work for a YouTube company, so I see really fun, cool videos like this all the time. But I happened upon this one just as I was writing my sermon for this Elder Sunday and struggling with the task of bringing a message of hope. I mean, coincidence? Listen to the YouTuber Mark Rober himself. This is what he says at the very end of the video. Mark said, as they drove away, I thought about everything they'd been through for the past year and all the people that came together from all across the country to donate their time and energy to a kid they'd never even met. And I might not vote the exact same as all of them, but for five inspiring days, none of that stuff mattered. Whenever I find myself short on hope, I find it helps to put my phone down and choose to see the good parts in my fellow humans and be one of the good parts for my fellow humans to see. So this week, I challenge you to one, put your phone down. Two, choose to see the good parts in a fellow human you don't normally like or relate to. And three, be the good part for another fellow human to see. I love you all, COV. Stay strong, and more than anything, don't lose hope. Hello, I'm Bob White, also an elder of the church. A couple of weeks ago, I received Pastor Michael's weekly update letter in the mail, and I read that letter, and then I took the gift offering envelope, and I set it aside in a stack of bills that I intended to pay. So a couple of days later, I came back to that stack of bills, started paying them, and I got to the gift offering envelope, and I thought to myself, wow, this has been an expensive couple of weeks. I had to make a copay on a medical procedure. <laughs> I also had to uh, make a payment on a piece of furniture that we bought. We need to figure out what's going on with the leaks in the back of the house because it's ruining the door. And I haven't even paid all these bills yet. So I thought, how much should my gift be this week? Can I afford to give a gift this week? But then another thought struck me, and that was, if I do give a gift this week, who will I be helping? So would I be helping families that show up at the food bank for basic food necessities? And these families aren't showing up for steak and lobster, they're showing up for just basic food necessities to get them by until the next few weeks. Would I be helping some children who are hopefully going to come back to the preschool soon so that they can continue to have a nice, safe, secure, fun, and productive learning environment? Would I be helping, perhaps, when we can go to Tijuana again and build homes? Will I be helping a family graduate from living in a glorified cardboard box with a dirt floor to something with a foundation, grill doors and windows, a roof that doesn't leak? And that's a big improvement in their lives. Maybe I would be helping the church staff with their salaries. And these people do a wonderful job of keeping the church operating from a business perspective, and that's not easy. Or maybe somehow, some way, my gift would help somebody who's hurting, just a random stranger, and maybe somehow would have a conversation with Pastor Michael, or maybe one of you reintroducing themselves to God, or maybe introducing yourselves to God for the first time, which 
would be a wonderful thing for their lives. So when I got to thinking all of this, I thought, wow, my financial situation is not that bad after all. And I know that a lot of us have financial challenges with COVID-19, and even before that, some of us were struggling. But please know that if you do give a gift, it will be used in the utmost faith, and it will be used to help this world become a better place, and ultimately, it will be used to help somebody. So there are three ways that you can donate. One is mail a check here to Church of the Valley. Second is to drop off your gift at Little Brown Church in the offering box. And the third is to contribute online at cobtoday.org via PayPal. Thank you and God bless. Today, Elder Carolyn Fisher, along with the other elders, are celebrating faith, hope, and love. So let us come to this table of faith, hope, and love. I hope you've had time to gather your elements. Let's take communion together. When they were all gathered in one place, after giving thanks, he took the bread and broke it and said, this is my body. Take, eat, each of you. Let's take the bread together. Then he took the cup and said, this is the blood of the new covenant, poured out for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us take the cup together. And now, let us pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much for the opportunity each Sunday to worship you through communion, remembering what you've done for us and how much you have loved us that you gave us your Son. We thank you for your goodness and for this love. Through Jesus we pray. Hello, I'm Herb Gore, one of your elders. In the second century AD, a terrible plague would run through the Roman Empire, killing almost a quarter of the population, including the emperor. One of the historians who recorded that terrible era made the statement that the Christians remained in the cities when others deserted the area and ministered to those who were sick and dying, in many cases being the only ones to bring them food and water. And he said, even though he was a pagan and did not believe in God, how they loved one another. For 2,000 years, this has been the hallmark of Christians that we love and care for one another. Many educational institutions, hospitals, and charitable organizations have benefited from the love that Christians have shared with the world. Right now, we're having to experiment with sharing that love in a different way. We can't physically be there for one another to give hugs, uh, to hold hands, to have a shoulder to cry on. So we are reinventing love as the rest of the world is having to reinvent how we get along with one another. Video, Zoom conferencing, and other means of being for one another are happening. We have online Zoom Bible study. We have this service available over our website. And our food pantry is reopened in a way that provides safety for those who are coming to receive food and those who are receiving, who came in to work in that food bank. At this time, we are having a great outpouring of love because people are calling one another, they're being in touch with one another. I think that in many ways we may be stronger after this comes to an end because we will realize we can be there for one another even when we can't physically be present. The calls, the cards, the prayers that we hear are said for one another are reminders 
that God's love can be expressed through us, even in difficult times. I love you all.